Welcome to Business is Good, the podcast all about what it means to be in business in the 21st century. Small and medium-sized businesses are the lifeblood of the UK economy, and globally they can and will have a huge impact on society, the economy and how we live our lives. From technology disruption to reworking a solution to solve the world's biggest problem, Business is Good is a podcast about what it takes to be successful and how every business defines that in different ways. Business is no longer just about being defined by what you do, but it's about giving back and redefining the problems and how we solve them in a way that works for you. I'm your host, Caroline Sumners, and I'll be giving you weekly inspirational stories from business owners who are building business and solving problems. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Business is Good podcast. I'm your host, Caroline Sumners, and today I'm talking to Claire Perry-Louise about uh, all things community, being human and having and and really um, how you approach your marketing in a conversational way. Um, as many of you may know, I do talk about this on an ongoing basis. That actually um, being human is actually the number one thing that we need to be doing with our marketing. Um, and I think in a not even post pandemic world because we're in the middle of it now. This is uh, an even more relevant episode to it was when I recorded it back in uh, I don't know back in March sometime I guess but anyway Claire and I had a great conversation um, around community um, and why that is important to your business and growing your business especially in this uh, in this strange climate that we find ourselves in so enjoy and um, yeah this is me and Claire Perry Louise chatting community and being human For inviting me on today, it's nice to be here. Um, my name's Claire Perry Louise, and I'm foremost an entrepreneur, but my real passion is people, culture, and community. And since I started working for myself from 2013, I actually went on a marketing course for the weekend, and that was the catalyst that transformed me from being a solicitor into working for myself. And the whole process and the whole journey I've taken has been because I've really felt there's so much that we can be doing as businesses to build ongoing relationships with our clients and our audience. Because my the way I see it is that years and years ago, we would do business with people who we new from our local communities we'd go to people we refer to etc etc and then the internet came along which gave us access to a global a global marketplace yeah and i think that that for a time was good but then what's happened is over time people are just searching for the cheapest price and then obviously at some point that cheapest price will stop and you can't go any cheaper to give the goods. And so I believe that all businesses will be um, community-based in the future. And you can see from the bigger brands that incorporate community into their businesses like Amazon, um, Airbnb, they've all got community at their centers. So I work with entrepreneurs and um, CEOs and business leaders to help them bring loyalty into their business, into their brand, and really help them build those ongoing relationships that will be so important and will push them above their competition. Um, because at the end of the day, we're all humans. Yeah. And we don't just want to be sold to. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was, um, there was a, a post on LinkedIn the other day that I was getting involved with, and there was someone going on about, um, business to business versus business to, you know, B to C, B to B. 
And uh, there's quite a lot of people on it talking about it's not actually it's neither. Yes, you're in a business context, but actually you need to think now about human to human or person to person or whatever. And there seems to be I mean, that kind of more movement towards that as well, isn't there? So it's away from all the kind of like, um, I don't know, the language of business to business used to be just so, and I've worked in business to business marketing for a long time. Um, uh, used to be just so dry and so full of acronyms and stuff like that that you wouldn't use in day-to-day yeah. life and so hopefully it's moving to a bit more all right we're in a business environment but I'm talking I'm actually talking to a human here so yeah um I think there's a think big disconnect that. yeah I think there's a big disconnect from what I see because I've worked in corporates and run culture workshops for them and also done sort of one-to-one interviews with different stakeholders in the business. And I think that for a long time, especially in the corporate world, there's this feeling that it's you're at work and you're a different person to the other person who is yeah. not at work. But now with the technology, we are always contactable, whether we're at work or not. And the impact of the day you are having before you even start work or as you leave the office will impact into the way you perform at work. Um, And so I think we need to have more open conversations and more communication within business environments, because if we could really understand that someone's not showing up fully and they're not fully present in a meeting because they've been up all night with their child, for example, because they're ill or they, they've got to leave early because of something, some other commitment or they've got a health issue going on. If we could actually understand and communicate those needs, mm-hmm. then I think we'd be in a better position, but it always comes down to, to the element of fear because as humans um, if you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, yeah. one of the fundamental needs is safety and so if we come forward and we say we're having these issues at home we're worried we might lose our jobs and if we lose our jobs we might lose our homes we might lose our spouse etc cetera, etc cetera. and so what happens is people lock down and they don't open up and have these conversations. And so I think it compounds the, the problem. And, and that's why part of my work is to help people communicate more effectively so we can like, open up and be more authentic. And I know that in, in, med- in social media, there's sometimes uh, some of the uh, gurus are saying, right, we need to put authenticity into your marketing strategies. Mm. But I always say that authenticity, it, it's not a strategy. It's a way of being. And it's like, that's just, you can't, you can't do a strategy to be authentic. You're either authentic <laughs> or, you're or you're not, not authentic. <laughs> so you can't build it in. But I think we just need to be more vulnerable with our shares and more open. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's important in work environments, for example, that the leaders start with opening up um, a place where people feel safe to talk. Because, so that's why when yeah. you're working with businesses, you start from a position of culture as well, because yeah. it, it's difficult to do that as a, as a marketing strategy, if you like, um, to your customers, if you haven't got that through the whole organization. Exactly. Um, I, I mean, it's virtually impossible, isn't it? Because if culturally that's not the sort of organization you are, you're never going to be able to do that with no. With, uh, with your customers. And then and that's when the inauthentic- inauthenticity shows through, I think. Do you, exactly. do you get what I mean? If they try and do it without having it culturally through the whole organisation. Yeah, that's and I, I made this link years ago because when I came off the back of the, the marketing course I went on, I started with working with membership sites and training. And I wrote a book about membership sites and I was doing workshops. And, and I started to think, well, actually, these are great ways for businesses to build loyalty into their brands. But then I thought, well, actually, if you haven't got the right culture in the business, like you were just saying, then you're not going to be able to bring, build, bring community because the people who are uh, who are communities an ongoing relationship yeah and if your employees aren't invested in the business and they're not living the values of the business it's not going to translate into a great business because they're not going to care 
and it kind of brings me on to the point as well of why values in a business are so important as well and um because the values are sort of the the guidelines that that will guide what decisions within the business and what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable and that translate as a as a whole sort of you know it's, it's a living organization and that's what culture is it's it, culture is every business has culture whether it's defined or not because you, you might have the values on the wall and that's quite often a lot of businesses think they've done the values exercise by putting it on the wall <laughs> but no one's living them so yeah. really the culture is what is going on in the organization and culture is shared through stories so what are the stories that are emanating from the business so yeah. I, I mean know. I've de- I've definitely worked for organizations where um large organizations who I won't mention but anyone looked at my LinkedIn profile they could see who they were and um <laughs> and that was exactly what we had we had values posters and we all were given a little card these are the values but mm. the culture was nowhere near that no, it's it was just such a now when I look back I realized what an unhealthy culture it was but when you're mm. in it you're like oh well, this is perfectly normal doesn't everyone yeah. act like this it's like no um and I don't know now what 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 it's like they've been through various sort of um uh different acquisitions and stuff like that which is also challenging um so it could be completely different but yeah you're totally right having your values there but actually not living and breathing them is a completely different thing do you think it's easier for smaller businesses to do um I think the answer would probably be yes as in in terms of the culture is created by the people and yeah. ultimately leadership starts off creating what's wrong and what's right for them and i think that if you're starting off an organization there's probably a higher chance that you're attracting people who have similar values to you because it's so small and you've got to work with them so closely and so i think possibly it could be um, but then as it expands the business and then you're trying to hire, if you're not hiring people in line with the values and then, for example, leadership in the early days, the leader's there and the team's small and they can all sit around a table together and have coffee together. But then as a business expands, there might not be so many opportunities for communication and then maybe there's a bit of a breakdown. I think. So I think there is that. But also uh, the other thing might be smaller businesses, maybe they don't put the resources towards yeah. values and culture and they don't think it's relevant to them. So they might not even know that that exists and maybe as well possibly a smaller business might not have as many resources and so they just hire someone to fill a role that needs to be done and they don't think they think this role needs to be done so we'll hire but they don't really think it matters whether they the personality is particularly in line with the other personalities in the business so yeah I've heard someone uh, a guy speak Ryan Dice do you know Ryan Dice yeah I've heard of so him. I've heard him say before that he only ever hires for attitude and yeah. um because you can teach exactly the actual thing that needs to be done you can teach Facebook ads you can teach these things but you can't ever teach attitude mm. and um I think that's I think that's true. And the thing is also, um, I was reading some statistics the other day about, you know, um, the desire for people to want more flexible work, more agile work. Um, they don't want to be sat commuting. And I mean, one job I had, I commuted two hours to London every day for a year. And I, I, mean, I don't even know how I did it, really. But uh, people don't want to do that anymore. No. So I think it's going to become even more important culture from a hiring perspective um I mean my nephew when he graduated university he turned a job down because he didn't like the culture and I was like you're unemployed I I didn't I didn't understand I genuinely didn't understand it and actually thinking about it afterwards it was totally the right thing to do and I think as more people come into the workplace workplace that that are looking at employees on that basis, I think this becomes even more important because it's not just from a consumer point of view, it's from a 
hiring point of view and it's the whole ecosystem of the business isn't it yeah totally yeah and with what you were saying as well there's going to be more remote workers and obviously there's a rise in co-working spaces and and that type of thing because now we don't need to be working with people who are in the same vicinity and I think that brings its challenges as well in terms of maintaining the culture and also maintaining the lines of communication and this is something that I've come across where I've been a consultant in the business but because we haven't had regular meetings because we're not in the same space then there's been a lot of communications breakdowns and it's not enhanced the relationship so it's like one of those things that you learn it's like that's why you take on mentors because you learn all these things you're like okay next time I need to bring this into the into the yeah. plan that we must meet every week to have a conversation yeah. so I think that's really important so so how did you so you said you were a solicitor before yeah. <laughs> it's quite a leap from being a solicitor to now yeah talking about culture and community how did that come about what was it just like a natural progression or was there just like well, I, I was introduced well, on YouTube. I saw the video of the guy, Simon Coulson, who was running the Internet Business School marketing weekend. So I went on that weekend. And this is a bit like one of those questions where people say they found their thing in life or people are yeah. always searching for the thing because it was very different to anything I'd done. And it was about how to make money online, but it was all about social media, like I said, membership sites, all of these things. And I, I was completely, I went to the three days and the whole time I was just taking notes. I was just like, this is, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then I knew I wanted to sign up for a mentorship program with him straight away before I even knew there was one, but I was like, I need to do more. I really want to do it. And it kind of just went from there. Mm. And then, like I said, I from the three-day course, he touched on membership sites and he didn't speak about it very much, but I thought, oh, I really think this is interesting because this means you don't have to have a one-off transaction with someone. I remember in the early days, I thought, okay, well, if you go to the hairdressers, for example, you go and you pay once and then you come away. Now, if you have your hair highlighted and a cut, it might cost a hundred pounds. Mm. And then they try and upsell you the fancy shampoo and conditioner, which is probably going to be another 40 pounds. And you've already spent a hundred, for example. So you're thinking, well, I'm not going to spend 140. And I had this idea. I thought, well, if you pay per month, 20 pounds, yeah. it's, it's when you, one, you're going to be loyal because you're going back anyway, because you're already paying your subscription Two, you're like, okay, I'll pay another 40. Cause you kind of forget you paid the rest of it. So I, I remember thinking this really early on. I thought, wow, this is amazing. And it was almost like, I don't know where, where all this came from. I, it just seemed to be innate in me. And I just, so I went down the membership sites and then I got opportunity to speak. And then I, I was actually re- speaking at Simon's events um, for, quite a lot of years um, running workshops, teaching people about membership sites. And then, as I said a bit earlier as well, I thought, hold on a minute, people don't seem to be getting the results very quick from these membership sites because they think they're an easy fix. And that's where I realized that there's culture and community. It's about connection and it's about community. It's not about membership sites are the tool so I often use the analogy where if you're having a new kitchen fitted and then you get the planner in to plan how it's going to look, you don't say to them, but what screwdriver are you using? Because you do need the screwdriver to put the, put the units in, but you don't start off knowing what the screwdriver is. You know, the membership side, people would say, Claire, what, you know, should I use um, wishlist member or yeah, yeah, yeah. wild apricot or whatever it was called back in those days. I can't remember those because it was a few years ago. They'd say, what pa- platform should I use? But later on, I realized that it's so important. What is that connection and what it, what is it is going to bring people together? And that's where I started moving into this thing where I was really fascinated. And I, I've had I've had lots of mentors over the years and, and, and I felt really inspired. So I, I've, my house is like an Amazon business and self-development <laughs> area. Like mine. Yeah, yeah. So I just really got into all of this stuff. So it was, the reason I became a solicitor was because my dad said it was a good route to go down and that there is a certain path where you go when you're a solicitor, you go to university, you get your degree, you get a training contract, you qualify. Yeah. And it's very easy. I mean, clearly you have to put work in and learn and do all the legal stuff, but 
it, it's funny because it's really different to what I do now because I don't have any roadmap anymore. It's up to me. And this is why I feel if you're going to work for yourself, you, you need to find that what that passion is. And, and I feel really passionate about culture and community and through this journey, I, I met some amazing people um, and I was introduced to um, a guy who set up a whole program at Zappos um, in America, which is one of the places with the best culture oh, in the I love world. That book. I've read that. I've read the book. Well, you read Robbie's book or uh, the no, Zappos book or Delivering Zappos Happiness. Book. Yeah, 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 Delivering yeah, yeah. Happiness. Yeah. Great so, book. So Robbie, um, who's now a friend of mine, he, I got introduced to him, but then he mentored me and taught me all these amazing things you can do um, all about culture because he set up the training program called Zappos Insights and they go and tr- teach culture to other businesses throughout the world because they're so amazing. And so I had that introduction as well, that really deep introduction into culture. And it just I just feel fascinated by humans and connection and, and giving people a voice through community because it connects people. So it's really different to obviously being a solicitor, but I wasn't inspired to do that. Yeah. So um, it kind of came along like that. And I think probably the way it happened was following my intuition. So if you mention a book to me now, if I hadn't read Delivering Happiness, as soon as we got off this this um, interview, I'd say I'd be on Amazon Googling it and seeing if I thought it was exciting. And then I'd order it and I'd read it. And that's basically how the journey's happened and how I ended up doing all the things I've done. So. Yeah, I can't remember where I got recommended to look. Oh, I know. I was at an event that Pip Jameson, or who's got a company called The Dots. I don't know if you know no, her. I don't know. She no. was, she's set up a really amazing business. And um, she, was, she basically presented these eight books that she thought were the best business books ever. And Delivering Happiness was one of them. Oh, okay. And I can't remember a couple of, a couple of others I, I ordered as well. And I read all of them. And um, I, I just I thoroughly enjoyed it. But just interesting what you were saying about membership sites. People get so hung up on the tech, like you say. And they don't think about the, the, the fundamentals of what it's all about. I mean, you're probably in communities or groups to do with hobbies, to do with all sorts of stuff. And you can, when you're like in this world, you can see the ones that work well and you can see the ones that don't Mm. work well, right? I mean, one of the most active communities I'm in, and I've mentioned this before on the podcast, is um, I've got a dog that is a miniature schnauzer. Right. And there's a a, a Facebook group called Mad About Schnauzers. There's something like eight and a half thousand people in it, most of them in the UK. And it's literally just full of people who are obsessed with miniature, have, have miniature schnauzers. But as a result, what happens now is there's fundraising, people do um, for, for, for dogs in puppy farms, people craft and make stuff and, you know, you buy it and you get, it gets proceeds to, to different things. But at the heart, the whole thing is about the dogs. Yeah. And they don't actually matter that it's run on a Facebook group, um, you know, because they haven't thought about, they haven't sort of spent detailed, like, um, information about where am I going to run it? What's the tech? What am I going to do? And all of that. It's just naturally, organically kind of like built up. Yeah. They're probably the best communities, I would say. Yeah, that's because, and that's the thing about starting up a community. It's the m- most important thing is, and it's funny because I use the analogy because I, because the children wanted a dog. And so I got a dog last summer and now I take this dog out um, and everybody talks to me. Yes. <laughs> and... <laughs> So I use yes. a shirt. Yeah, exactly. So no one would speak to, if I walk down to town on my own now, no one will speak to me. But if I take the dog out, everyone speaks to me. Yeah. And that's because it form, it's, it's having that shared identity because we're both dog owners. And so that's what communities need. They need to find their dog, whatever that might be. So there's a community that became really successful called um, This Mum Runs. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. and that's because the mum, one mum decided she couldn't reach the running club at seven because she had the children. So she said I'm meeting at half past seven anybody want to join me so it all these mums turned up and it started this massive movement because it's it's connected people and that's what a lot of people are missing when they think about building a community and so people identify as dog owners they want to share their pictures and it goes from there so if you're a business you need to find what is that shared identity because community is about belonging connection shared identity and these are the things that are really really important and uh, when I created 
I created a course about Facebook groups and my course goes deeply into these things about shared identity and belonging and moving people up the commitment curve, which is from when they don't know about you to joining and then getting to know more and becoming brand ambassadors. Because a lot of the training I saw was about, it was just quick fixes, especially back a few years ago, it was about, well, just do you know, motivational Monday post and turbulent Tuesday and wicked Wednesday or whatever. And everyone was just doing these posts and those posts are important. And I guess people put them into their post, they put them into their Facebook groups because another thing that's really, really important for community building is rituals because it's like, that's how we identify. So we have Christmas every year and, and it's a ritual and every family will have a certain ritual they'll do either, you know, they'll go to the, Chris Dingle on Christmas Eve and then there won't open presents till 2 p.m. on Christmas Day or whatever. And it is individual rituals. And that's what we are as humans. We create rituals and we need these things. But sometimes just putting up a Facebook group isn't going to be enough to build community without some of these other elements we've been speaking about. So So do you think any business can create a community no matter what they are, no matter what the business is? Well, this is really interesting um, in terms of my learnings and where I've gone from trialing things. So I worked with a global corporate and they wanted to create a community. And at the time when I was working with them, we thought we could try Facebook. And looking back at it now, it is interesting because the leader who wanted to create this community she wasn't even on Facebook. So that should have been the first warning. Yeah. So we tried this, um, creating this Facebook group, but no one was there who we wanted to be there and it didn't work. And so leading on from there, I thought, this is interesting because I'm always thinking, okay, this is interesting. I'm like, we can build community, but do we have to build it, say, for example, in a Facebook group? Because Initially, six years ago, we were building community through membership sites. And and I know now membership sites have got really popular. But then along came Facebook groups. And Facebook groups have been really great in terms of one of one of the obstacles you need to overcome if you're building community is getting people to engage. Yeah. And Facebook groups give notifications, people have Facebook, and that is the habit forming prompt that makes people engage in the content because there's lots of things you can learn about how to engage so facebook groups came along and there was so they've been very popular and then some people say oh what about linkedin groups or well, linkedin groups are no good uh, from all my experience of them and what i've yeah. read so you can't go down that angle so i was thinking gosh can you put community into every business and then what i came across in my head i thought okay How do you build community? And that's by building relationships as well. So it's about connecting people with, you know, through the shared identity connection. And so then I thought, actually, there's a different way we can do this. And that's why I have also incorporated into my trainings how to set up and start a podcast. Because you can build community through a podcast because people are listening to you and they are engaging with you. very intimately in fact because they are um listening to you while they're driving or whether when they are um exercising or walking the dog or those kind of things so i think that i think a lot of businesses can build community into their business model as well as looking at the fact that engagement doesn't necessarily mean someone has to answer a post directly engagement is can be passive and in large communities some of the statistics are that um, 80 percent of the members will be passive and only 20 percent are active so podcasts are another amazing way to build community from my experience um and can build community in spaces like I was talking about in that corporate where they want to build relationships. They want to share their message. They want people to, they are engaging by actively subscribing and listening regularly. Yeah. And they will also, if you listen to a podcast, you're likely to listen to the at least 80% of it as opposed to scrolling on social media and seeing a, set, a post for a few seconds. So yeah. I, in answer to your question, I think every business should be building more relationships 
um, and building relationships into their business model. But I think it's very important to look at the different tools and work with someone who has got the experience to show what may or may not work for their business. Yeah, I think you're totally right, actually, because too often you see people saying, oh, let's just start a Facebook group. And it, it, it isn't the, the fix all for everything. But no. the other, I, I've noticed some other tools coming up recently, sort of like Mighty Networks. And yeah. I'm, in a, I'm in a group. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually a local networking group. And they've chosen to set their community up, online community up on Mighty Networks. And I think the challenge there is, like you say, is actually getting people to it. Yeah, that's totally, um, yeah. Because Gina, I can't pronounce her surname, yeah, but Gina yeah. Biarchi, uh, the yeah. founder of that, she, uh, she emailed me, I think. Uh, well, she did email me. Uh, I was going to say, I think it was about three years ago or two years ago. And we were going to have a, we were going to have a conversation about something. I can't remember now, but she's been working hard on that. And it's interesting because yeah. this space is an, is an upcoming space. Yeah. But, but equally, having the app, so Mighty Network, you can have your own app, hmm. but it is there's a, that there's something to overcome like you say with the engagement so i'm part and i have been for many years of another community um which is for community managers to help them learn all the skills to build community yeah. and they were on facebook and then they had they have a membership site and they built it through mighty networks now i'm a member and i hardly ever log in because i forget and there's the app yeah and it's on my desktop now if they were on the Facebook more, I would see it. So that's one of the biggest issues. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. But I hadn't. I, I, I think you're right about the podcast thing as well. Because I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts um, of various different types, and I think one of the ones that I think is. I mean, it's not a business, but um, there's a couple that I listen to. That if you mention to people about it, there is a whole little kind of like community. And one is I listen to the Peter Crouch podcast which is okay. bizarre, but it's <laughs> hilarious. Right. And it's not just about football, but there's a whole movement that's going on with that. It's like they call it Pass the Pod, and they've got all sorts of stuff going on on Twitter. And it's a, it's a whole sort of um, community that they've built up around just this podcast. That's a really good example of one. And then the other one is... Um, my dad wrote a porno. I don't know if you've seen this one. No, I think I might have seen it. I think it's quite high in iTunes, isn't it? It's I haven't really listened to it. It's really high in iTunes mm-hmm. and it is hilarious. Um, again, but it is all about um, how they've taken, and they've taken now a lot of those, both those podcasts actually have taken the, the list, the people listening and put on the offline events on as a result. And that easy sell, right? You yeah. Just, you get people to come along. Um, like the... And my dad wrote a porno um, lot. I've put on like a theatre show where they okay. just they fill the theatre. And similar for the Peter Crouch Pat, Peter Crouch podcast. All right, here's more high profile. Um, but I think it shows that it's feasible to take what you're doing within a podcast and then move it to another element. Yeah, and it's important that you do that because um, so much became online, and it's really important that we bring offline because offline. you build trust much quicker with people if you're in person with them and it takes much longer to build online connections and I think that's another important part of community building that we need to be doing like bringing people together more because it does create quicker connections deeper trust and more loyalty so if we can do that and and through the podcast um you know using podcasts as a way to reach people especially when people are busy as well because people there's so much to read and see online that a podcast is something that's different and also the other thing about podcasts is the rise of the smart speakers in homes mm-hmm. um which i won't say because mine will start talking to me but <laughs> we're gonna there's gonna be more audio content out there and so that means that as marketers we need to be creating more audio content because it can then be picked up and played through our speakers which a lot of if you look at the statistics around podcasts a lot of people are playing um their podcasts through their smart speakers in their homes so um it's going to go into cars and all sorts so it's definitely a place yeah and i guess that that also relates back to the whole voice search aspect and optimizing for voice search doesn't it exactly yeah yeah which is a whole other thing to start thinking about in the next year or so i guess yeah i did look into some of that i thought oh gosh this is complicated (laughs) (laughs) yeah i've i've uh I've personally purposely avoided it right now. <laughs> so what's so what's next for you for your business? What are you focusing on right now? 
So I have been basing on podcasts lately because of all the things I've just said to you, because I think it's an amazing thing. Because I'm always trying to work out how you can bring community more into businesses. Um, I really enjoy working and doing the culture aspect and bringing um, and working with people. So I do these things called obstacle breakthrough sessions, where if there's any issue in in an organization or something that needs to be spoken about, it's it's this process where basically you bring out everything that's going wrong and everything around a, a certain issue. And it's a bit, the analogy is that if you go out and you drink too much and then you're sick, you feel better after you've been sick, don't you? So it's that's yeah. the kind of analogy. But it's amazing because you bring it all out. It's all in the open. And then from that space, I shift the energy in the room and then people say, okay, well, let, how can we move forward from this space? And then we get, answers and then get get people to take responsibility for the things they want to move forward with so um they um amazing sessions that i really enjoy doing because you can't believe how much you can achieve in a session like that where you can bring out it's again like i said it's about communication and people feel like they can share things more so um so i've enjoyed doing those but i've just bringing the business a lot more i'm refreshing my website um and doing stuff and making it a bit more more human I think and more I guess the words it had quite a masculine aspect to it before being more thinking it had to be more masculine to be attractive to corporates for example but yeah my and my feeling is that we are dealing with humans and I'm very heart-centered and heart-led with the work I do and quite often I intuitively understand what's going on with people because that's the way I'm built so I'm trying not to shy away from those kind of things that really are my zones of genius and bring that more to the way that I show up in the world and that's going through my website so I just so I'm going through a bit of a transition with those kind of periods there but I really just want to my vision for the past few years has been that I really want the world to be a world where employee happiness is the norm and not the exception because there's so much, I see so many people and so many of my friends over the years have been unhappy in their jobs. Yeah. And to me, if I can make shifts in workplace culture, if I can bring community to more workplaces, it then opens up more conversations, more points of connection. And and it's interesting actually, because over the last year or so, I've worked with more CEOs who have really benefited from being able to ask me things that they feel almost embarrassed to ask other people because they think that because they're a CEO, they need to know these things. And we've talked about things like social media or, um, you know, how to set up their Twitter accounts or understanding other things that are more people led skills, I suppose, in businesses. So that's been an interesting area that I didn't realize would would, that I'd be working in so I think all of those things together it's just but it's being an entrepreneur is always I'm always evolving normally too quick um put something out there I'm like oh that's that doesn't feel true anymore it's not in alignment with where I'm, I am so I'll put something else out but I think that's the name of the game well, yeah but I think that you're still trying but you're that is true but you're still stick you're still sticking with it's about culture it's about community yeah I think I think you're right yeah you are right of, brings it back to the you know, yeah. it's always, it's always, it's like everything I've ever done has been about culture. It's about community and it's about connection. So whether that was membership sites, yeah. Facebook groups, podcasts, culture workshops, it's all the same theme. And that's the stuff that I'm really passionate about and I can talk about forever. So from that point of view, it's just, it's just, I think one of the biggest struggles in this area. And in fact, my mentor, Robbie, who I was talking about earlier from Zappos, he said to me, if I was on my deathbed and the last thing I was going to say to you, I don't know why I said this, because it's a bit weird. Like if this is what the last thing you'd say to me, he said, he said, but what I'd say to you, Claire, is go out and conquer culture in the UK. Because he said, we at Zappos, we were taking people from all over the world and teaching the businesses how to have good workplace cultures and he said the hardest market to conquer or convince that it was really important was the UK market and he's a keynote speaker he speaks all around the world or massive organization so he's got a lot of experience he just says it's the hardest egg to crack in the UK so why is that is that just because of an inbuilt cynicism and I, I don't know I didn't ask him but maybe it is or maybe it's just how we are as as a race aren't we we are more um 
inward, aren't we? We're not yeah. necessarily, we're all, we, we don't, Americans maybe say it more like it is, whereas yeah. we, I mean, he, there's a policy at Zappos where they're, they're, um, what they have to wear to work is the rules are you can wear what you like as long as it doesn't offend anybody. And if someone is offended, that person who's offended has to go up to the person and say, I'm offended you wearing those flip-flops because I don't like seeing your toes or whatever it might be. And maybe that works in America, but in the UK, I don't know whether we're open enough to be able to have those conversations. And I think, yeah. yeah, I think there's that. And it's funny because so there's so much more misunderstanding, I think, in, in recent years because we live by text. And for example, I've been sending voice messages rather than texting. And people are like, wow, I haven't had a voice message. Um, and people are much more sort of astounded by it because we've got so used to just doing text and we're hide behind the computers. And, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody else. You know, you're hiding behind a computer. So I think we need to be able to, you know, my message is to help people peel away all of those things and and remember that every individual is different because they've grown up in their own circumstances, they've had their own experiences, they've got their own culture, culture and you actually never know what's happening in the world of somebody else when you speak to them. And if maybe they ignore you on a day or they don't give you the right response that you think – you've got to not think it's about you. And so some things I'm really sort of talking about lately are more about you've got to take radical responsibility for yourself and not always project it out and say, well, they did this to me, they did that to me. Because I always believe that things show up for you to help you enhance your life and and look at things with a different perspective. So I think some of that work's important to me moving forward. Yeah, I think think that is important because I think we've gone through a couple of years with all the political stuff that's been going on where it's literally who can shout the loudest. And if you can shout the loudest, then your opinion is the one, right? And I think we've just got to get back to that, having the conversations and not being quite so judgmental. And Just because someone doesn't agree with you doesn't mean they're wrong. You've just got to no, listen. Yeah, because because people, I mean, I don't watch television or follow politics, but, but so I, I'm not the best to comment, but I do know that every individual shows up and they everyone thinks they're doing the best they can. People believe they're doing the thing that's right. And that's because they've grown up, they've been, they've had different parents, they've experienced different things in their life. And then they're showing up in that way because that's what they truly think. And like you say, if you're just, well, you don't have to agree with every policy. And I'm not saying that people should be doing wrong things or anything like that, but there's always a different element to why people, you've got to look beyond that and show some compassion as well. And it, it is super hard, but sometimes you just have to let things go. Like things in my life have, have caused me anxiousness or upset. And I've decided that you've either got to take one direction and make a change or do something about it, or you've got to let it go because the yeah. only person suffering in the end is you in the middle. Because yeah. and things that in my personal life I've let go, I feel a lot better and I've had a lot better relationships because I've just let it go. I've like processed it. I thought, okay, what are the lessons I've learned from this? Okay, I've learned X, Y, and Z. Okay, and now I'm going to move on because it's destroying me more than whatever the event was. And, and, and the reason the person's acting like that is because they have experienced different things in their childhood, which has made them respond in this manner. And so I think uh, we all need to take radical responsibility for ourselves, for what's showing up in our lives. And because I believe that we create our own realities where and give us, and that's why you, you end up crossing paths with people. You're like, wow, we've got so many similarities because we align with people who are on similar paths. So that's you know my belief so well I think that's probably a pretty good place to end on that yes <laughs> okay very deep can't, she's getting can't deep really, can't really follow that so <laughs> uh, yeah, she can do it. Excellent. no really really good and really interesting to talk to you again Claire so okay thanks so much people have, uh, will get something out of it and start thinking about what they can do about culture and community within their business yeah so that'd be great so thank you for having brilliant. me brilliant okay I hope you enjoyed that um, that episode of Business is Good. 
um, with Claire. Um, I had a great time talking to Claire. She's always so insightful about what we need to be doing in terms of building community and being conversational. And I hope you managed to get some tips for that, especially right now um, in terms of how you approach your marketing and approach, you know, everything that is to do about growing your modern business. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in and speak to you again soon. Tune in next week where we'll have more inspirational stories talking about moving your business beyond what it is and moving it more towards what you're in business for, what's important and doing good and changing the way things should be done. <laughs>